So this video is going to be about the fundamentals of the CSS display property. There are four property values that I'm going to talk about. Block, inline, inline block, and none. So I have a pretty simple HTML page here. Inside the main element I have three paragraphs. I've given them the IDs 1, 2, and 3 so I can target them. And I've applied background colors to each of them. And then they all have a white text that's 50% alpha, so a little bit of the background color shows through. So that's what I have for basic styling. You'll see in the paragraph here that I've set display to block. This is the default for paragraphs. Now, inline and block, those are the two values. Well, inline, block, inline, and block, those three values. Those are the default for almost everything that you're going to use on a web page. The difference between block and inline is if you think about something like an anchor, it appears inside of a piece of text. So if I was to take this word, for example, and turn that into an anchor, well, it's not going to disturb anything else around it. I can turn this into an anchor tag, and I can put the closing anywhere inside of here. Let's put it right there. This anchor is not impacting the display of anything else around it. It's sitting in line with the rest of the text on the same lines. So I didn't have to start a new line here. I didn't have to start a new line after this. So that's what inline does. Block, a paragraph, it is a block element. So when it starts, when I write something like paragraph, main, or header, or body, these block elements have to start on a new line. And when they're finished, whatever comes after them has to come on a new line too. So even if I were to put another anchor tag here, let's create one right here with a little bit of text, you can see this inline element, even though there was space right here, it had to go onto a new line because this paragraph is display block. So it starts on a new line and forces anything that comes after it to start on a new line. So that's block and that's inline. Inline block takes a little bit of each. Images are display inline block. So an image, if you think about it being inside of this paragraph, I could put an image right here and it would be displayed. Let's see if I take this anchor tag out of here. And I put an image tag. There we are. So here's my image. If I give it a width and a height, so let's say width 100, height 100. Just make a nice little square. Oh, it's going to need something. Um, here, I'll do something from Pixum. Uh, photos slash 100 slash 100. There we are. Okay, there we are. We have now an image. Now I haven't styled this. There's nothing in my CSS about images. This is just what they do. They're inline block. So inline in that they appear on the same line as the text wherever they're written. So after the word preferendus, you can see there's my image and it appears before this word. It just forces this one line open to be taller. The difference between inline and inline block is with an inline block element, I am allowed in the CSS to give it a width and a height. So if I were to come up to my CSS, style the image, I can say width 50 pixels, height 50 pixels. There we are. I am styling this and I can do this because it is inline block. If you take something that's inline, like an anchor tag, you cannot give it a width. You can't change its width. It just wants to take up as small a space as possible. Anchor tags, they don't force the other text away from it. They fit in as small a pace, space as possible, whatever their content needs. So if I were to come in here and create that other anchor tag, A, B, C, D, there we are. It only takes up this amount of space, so it collapses onto the content right here. That's the all the space that it takes. So that's block, inline, and inline block. 
none means you don't see it at all. It's like it doesn't exist. So if I were to change my image to display none, it's like it never existed on the page. If I were to do the same thing to the anchor tags, set them to display none, it's like they don't exist. So I don't see this ASDF. I don't see this ABCD. I don't see my image here. My CSS display none property says to the browser, pretend they don't exist. Build the rest of the page as if they were never there. Now, we can change, just like I've changed this display to none to hide this, I can change the display value for anything. My paragraphs are by default display block. I remove that. It doesn't change anything. They are still display block. That's their default value. So if I come in here, you can see I can change this to none. So the one in the middle disappears. Number two, it's like it's not there. I go back to block. Yep, there it is. If we make this inline, there, it see, it kind of collapses like this. I add another one here, inline. This paragraph is going up to try and be on the same line as the last bit of text for this paragraph. So the text is just wrapping again and again and again, and now this one's trying to fit next to it. It doesn't want to start on a new line because we've made it inline instead of block. There we are. Inline, none, and block. So the first one's inline, it's collapsing, the line height is showing the purple background and it's overlapping because it's bigger than the space available. The second one not appearing at all. The third one is still block, so it wants to start on a new line. So it is starting underneath this piece of text right here. It's not coming up to sit beside it. So that's CSS display, inline block and inline block and none. And you can change any piece of HTML to be any of these display properties. So it just takes a little bit of getting used to figure out where you want to change it. Most of the time you don't need to, but it's important to understand the distinction between block inline and inline block. All right, hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.